with the draft now being over, I think the most important part of team building and roster building for the Cowboys is over. But with this theme of letting the young players play, draft, develop, now comes the second half of that, and that's competition. I got five underrated camp battles, off-season battles, things to watch throughout OTAs, training camp, rookie mini camp, which is coming up this week. Let's talk about it. So, I think that this is one that people haven't talked about, and I want to jump right into it. Sam Williams versus Marshawn Nealon. Marshawn Neely drafted in the second round of this year's draft. I think that people haven't thought about this one. I think the theme has been Marshawn Neely will be Demarcus Lawrence's replacement. And he might. Listen, Demarcus Lawrence is still playing good football. He he hasn't slowed down. Like, no, he doesn't get after the quarterback the same way that he once did. But as far as playing the run, playing with hands, playing physical, you can't take Demarcus Lawrence off the field today. But why hasn't Sam Williams gotten on the field? Penalties, not being where he's supposed to be. Now, when you hear him talk, you heard him at the baseball game, he sounds like he, he's all in. He, he, he sounds like he's actually excited to be a part of the Zimmer defense. But the problem is, and I wrote this down, Marshawn Nealon, team captain. Marshawn Nealon, great effort, check. Marshawn Nealon, hard worker. Marshawn Nealon, great against the run. Marshawn Nealon, where he's supposed to be. All of those things that coaches fall in love with. You know what that builds? Trust. You know what Sam Williams doesn't have in this organization and from these leftover coaches? Trust. Will Mike Zimmer take to Sam Williams? Will Mike Zimmer take to Marshawn Nealon, who, by the way, that was his first defensive pick of his new reign, of his new regime as being the defensive coach, the defensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys. So that's a sneaky battle to watch because there could be a world where by the mid by midseason, by early to midseason, he's getting more snaps than Sam Williams because of what he does versus the run and the effort that he gives. I'm just saying. Number two, Eric Scott versus Kalen Carson. Eric Scott last year being drafted was probably the one guy who I had no idea about hadn't heard of him and I think that he showed some flashes around this time last year rookie minicamp OTAs the run around doing 707s Eric Scott showed all the things that you want a small school corner well not a small school but it was Southern Miss a, 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 a a small school in a sense and he he did he had the traits and he did what he was supposed to do now enter Kalen Carson kind of in the same realm as is is Eric Scott the only difference is he's not quite as good as an athlete but I think that he's a little bit more physical and he has a little bit more grit he honestly does remind me of Carolina's version of Josh Norman so in that who is your cornerback three four how does Kalen Carson get used, and can he jump and overtake Eric Scott? I don't really have any theory behind this one, but I just think that it'll be a fun camp battle to watch. Like, how does he deal with the bigger receivers and the quicker receivers as far as Kalen Carson? Has Eric Scott taken a year two jump? I think a lot of people forget that. Year one, Trayvon Diggs was not good. I'll never forget that game when he played against Terry McLaurin. He pretty much got barbecued. Year two, um, the coaching really settled in for him. His technique really settled in. He got better. And I think that that's very realistic when it comes to who? Eric Scott. So I'm not rooting or, or praying for anyone to lose this battle. I just really want to watch and see what happens. Number three, Cooper Beebe versus Brock Hoffman. Foots, there's no way that, that, that Brock Hoffman will have a shot. You never know. I think that Brock Hoffman is going to come in and make it extremely hard on Cooper Beebe just because he's focused. He wants to prove to Cowboys fans, to the world, that, hey, yes, I was undrafted. Or undrafted. Yeah, he was undrafted. But I'm, I'm, I've always had the claw. I've always had to, to, to beat the odds. I've always had. So he's going to come in and, if nothing else, give Cooper Beebe hell. We also have to remember, as high as we are on Cooper Beebe, I'm very high. He is making a switch from guard to center. 
If nothing else, it is going to be an adjustment, especially at the pro level, because at the pro level, it's still not college. So, yes, we 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 all think that Cooper BB can do it, but I still think that that's still a, a battle to watch because Brock Hoffman does actually have NFL experience doing it. So, you know, if if there if the snaps are bad, if the steps are wrong, if the lateral quickness doesn't match up, and Cooper BB isn't able to to clean that up or have that ready day one. Does Brock or Hoffman hold him off for a little bit? It'll just be that's a that's another battle just to watch as they both kind of come along. And again, and again, in talking to Two Eye yesterday, I think one of the biggest things that I took from that conversation is there's nothing wrong with having two to three good backups in the offensive line room. So I just I, I like this battle as one of there's really no winner or loser because I think that all of them, even TJ Bass, they'll all be on the team next year. Number four. I think this one will be a fun one, man. Tight end two, tight end three. Now, Fuss lives in a world where, correct your sins if you have to. The Luke Schoonmaker pick, I won't say that it was a bad pick, but I'm going to say it was a bad pick. You don't draft a blocking tight end. And listen, the athleticism and the upside is real, but you don't draft that type of player in the second round. I mean, hell, you drafted Jake Ferguson, who, by the way, it's Jake Ferguson and everybody else, just so we're clear. You draft Jake Ferguson in the fourth round. You draft Luke Schoonmaker with the athletic upside, I get it, in the second round, but now he's already injured. You, you, you saw the physicalness, but you didn't see the playmaking ability year one, although it be, although it be at year one. And I think that there are guys on the bottom half of this roster, John Stevens Jr., Brevin Span Ford will have something to say because of his blocking prowess and how physical, how big he is. And then Peyton Hendershot. Where does Hendershot fall in all of this? It's just going to be a fun battle because I think that as the as a pass catcher and as just a natural athlete, John Stevens Jr. is going to have something to say, barring him coming back from injury and being healthy. And then Brevin Span Ford. Here's a guy, if he would have came out last year, would have been a higher pick than coming out this year. The hands aren't consistent, but the blocking and the physicalness is. And if he if he can turn back the clock to being a guy who he had nine drops last year, but the year before that he was really good. He was right up there with Darnell Washington is probably the best blocking tight end, one of the better blocking tight ends to be drafted. So I just think that tight end three four is 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 something that we need to watch. Tight end two three is not tight end four. But excuse me, tight end two three is something that we need to watch for. And I think that. You know, if the Cowboys are fair, then the the best players should play because you have enough bodies at the position and the right type of bodies to do what Mike McCarthy wants to do. Number five, I won't say that this is a battle. It's more like organization. I want to sort out the safety room. Foots, what do you mean Dono and Malik are our guys? Yes, they are, but we've also seen quality reps from Wye and Marquise Bell. Hell, Izzy McQuamu is a guy who has shown you something. So what, what what am I saying? Is there a world where Mike Zimmer likes a Wanye Thomas over maybe a Donovan Wilson because of how he likes to play his safeties interchangeable? He doesn't want one box guy, one roof guy, i.e. Dan Quinn, all the cover one and cover three that he played. Malik Hooker was going to be on the roof. That was it. That was all. What if he likes a guy who has and checks multiple boxes like a Y.A. Thomas? What if there's a situation where he likes a bell? So all I want to do is just kind of sort this room out. And I don't think that it's been talked about enough. I think that we're just kind of saying, hey, this guy or that guy is a starter. And we got to remember, this is now Mike Zimmer's defense. He's going to want things different. That was, you know, and, and, and as I conclude this whole video, that was part of my thinking when it came to Marshawn Nealon versus Sam Williams. This is Zimmer's defense. So I, I, I really want to see how this safety, this safety room looks. I want to see how all these battles turn out. I mean, this is more like a sorting, uh, the, the safety room. But when you talk about, you know, Cooper Beebe and, and, and Brock Hoffman, I don't want anything to be given to Cooper Beebe as good as much as we like him. I want to be fair. We talk about the tight end room. I want the best player to win that battle when it comes to tight end two and three. So these are all battles that I'm looking at. I'm saying... <clears throat> May the best man win. They're underrated, sneaky battles throughout OTAs, throughout camp. But may the best man win. It's your boy Fuss as always. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Peace.